working with vSphere resource pools. Hey, this is Greg Shields with CPT Nuggets, and uh, well, that cluster of yours is great, but in your environment, what if you actually had multiple groups of people that contributed to building the cluster? Maybe you had uh, Department A that gave you a little bit of money, and you had Department B that gave you a little bit of money. Well, when you assign all those virtual machines into a cluster, well, there's really no way all by itself to ensure that Department A gets its 60% of the resources when Department B gets its 40% of the resources. Well, at least in a cluster by itself. One of the ways that you can actually accomplish this is by using what's called a resource pool. And in fact, if you create a resource pool by right-clicking on your cluster and choosing new resource pool, as you can see here, we can actually give it a name, Department A, and then from there identify the CPU resources and also memory resources that I want to associate with one resource pool as opposed to another. In fact, if I want to uh, limit the resources that are available to Department A, both in terms of CPU and memory, this gives me the ability to limit them down to perhaps just the 60% that they actually used in contributing to the creation of this vSphere cluster. When I'm done, if I choose OK, well, then I have this new resource pool that's associated with Department A. From there, if I choose to uh, create another resource pool, I can call this Department B. Department B can then get the, the um, remaining resources that are available. In this case, that would be, oh, I don't know, somewhere around there. Now, what this does is it creates two different pools of resources. And those pools have limits associated with them so that I can go about creating really any number of virtual machines and any size of virtual machines that I need as long as they don't exceed the limits that I've created here for this resource pool. When I'm done creating the resource pools, the last thing to do is to actually just drag the virtual machines in and under those resource pools and power them on. And as long as those virtual machines stay within the limits that I've set for the resource pool, well, then I'm going to be OK in separating out Department A's resources from Department B. If you want to learn more about configuring ESXi resources and generally configuring ESXi, check out my CVT Nuggets series at cvtnuggets.com. But until then, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.